his leadership style was sound to that extent that he moved with his people and allow everybody to freely express himself. With Sadir, he was the only leader. And so still, the humility, and then the Bua of Buate, the Senna, the Unipen for you, and the Casa, and the Yen, and the Abus. Or you being sure, the Bun Tenfu. Debia or smiling or three. No, here, young woman. Now, oh, yeah, amazing man of God. There wasn't much of relationship. Say, the chairman, you know this man. And so, even if the person is not uh, a, a fit, uh, they will keep quiet for you to let the person go. No, 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 no. He was able to spot talents among the young pastors for development for the future of the church. This is the man, Apostle Dr. Michael Kobnantumi, from an obscure village of Sramai in the Oti region. Apostle Dr. Michael Kobnantumi began his journey of faith in the Catholic Church before joining the Church of Pentecost at Yendi in northern Ghana in the 1980s where he was working as a professional teacher. If you say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm not sure how to do it. 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 I'm not sure how to Oh yeah, I'm so. We do back up Pentecost. Now we back Pentecost. We back the whole world chaplain. In terms of the baby, Apostle Antonia, my teacher, the baby, I feel as if I'm alone. I don't see. I'm not going to be far from. We go on for a few weeks for cancer. But we, we back. The normal number can move here. The Monday, we are going to enter. We are back. But the normal number is here. At age 24, and as an elder, he married the wife of his youth, Martha, and was called into the ministry of the church in April 1984. Those na ye batch no na che se ye ne ye nkoda akura wo na na 23 aso for 23 ya fa ye fofo na na onu ne ketu akura na me me che no fie mi edu de na che se ye ne ye nkoda wo na de bia nwumre be hwe na na me ne no nko a na ye te ba bi na ye bon komo na asori no mun komo ye <laughs> Mo na dache, a sorry niya me debe she monza. Just like that. Me kaise dakro anajo ye ko baby so. Sabre no na kufu di ano sebi toilet no aye amradi ane bi. Ena omudi biasram so na omudi carpet rubber carpet isram so. Ntimi yekwa ya osi ya mko, yekwa ya mimikwa ya ni mikwa kutinasi. Tukuruna nwana osi hei hei chwen. Ena onu ti toiletu pipa e ina nunyina oye misinia. Ne misusu sanka obeka sebi ya ye. Beto onu ye mami enu chire ojwoni ya humbrasia. Eni ubua o manipa. 
ana onhwe se wo ye panyi ana wo ya bofra obu obi a obre no ase nti da kronso mene ne ko dware ye mi enu mi mi de sapono stati fruminasia no se ye 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 nyare sa ye dware fri ye trisu ko ye na se ye nyare fri ye na se wa sofo a ye tire ne se de ye si dware otu wo ye ase mpa upon completion from bible school he got posted to his first station in the northern regional capital Tamale before attaining age 26. When we got to Tamale, the area had, had been demoted to the rank of a district pastor. The district overseer who was there had resigned. About 70% all the officers in the region and the district for that matter happened to have been ordained by the demoted area head because at the time he did the ordination he was not an ordained apostle or prophet so the executive council sent somebody to withdraw all of them from their respective positions. Elders became deacons, deacons members, deaconesses members. What kind of cooperation do you think you receive from such people? Things were very tough. When our car arrived, Nobody was around to offload our few belongings. The gentleman from Yendi who accompanied us did it. But the Lord granted grace. My area head was Ansong. was a very dedicated, experienced, matured person. And uh, under his leadership, the Lord granted a breakthrough. I spent only 11 months in Tamale when we were transferred. And we met since then, as one of four, a man to me. I'm very happy. Sir, probation was here. Tamale, I Samuel, nothing and open right in our head. Now, when you say Tamale district pastor, no Korean enemy, when you say software, some they could to power, they can be good to. Yabba <laughs> From Tamale, his ministry within his 39 years of active service saw him serve other following stations. Krachi Nkwanta. He was the first minister in Krachi Nkwanta district. When he came, he had a rented house which leaks a lot out of us to me and the wife never complained. Without means of transport, he walked far distances and near ones to open these assemblies. Papa no oyobia, nyame hum hum, asha na mama, ya kanyansa ni nidia, nyame di adjomo no pa 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 pa. Oyobia, ogo nsiye wo nyame igmem, 
ade ma hu wono hu se onokukudrofo bibie ni ho ebo no hu ade a emuye den e pim no kura no ojina ne nan so no bia odo nya mi djuma no pa pa na ade ma hu wono hu so o wa hu mrasi pa na oyo obi a o pensra fe pa 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 enti o ba ye no ama disit na peja prekopɛ bria yari ebe bo no na waka fa ko no ye bi musui ye su pa 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 cause o ba ye no no non te form sak basic ni ho no o king e ko assembly sa ho do nyina in fact person to me having studied the topography and knowing the problems uh, he is coming to confront quickly made up his plans and tackled the problem with zeal and enthusiasm i know him as a man of god a man of prayer a man of faith a man of hope very very courageous the local assembly was made up of 35 members within 3 years the number rose to 200 a big achievement now he was a man of the people very affable he visited all the members even at times when he comes to your house you are not there he finds your word about i remember one time he traced me to my farm met me on the farm and prayed over the farm he is somebody we like very 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 much when we were leaving tamale for crashing quite time the vehicle that was to convey us delayed and was not coming so a dickness who was delegated to accompany us to our new station to introduce us she had to go with him and uh, my wife together with the young man had to come on board that truck the car broke down for three days in the forest my wife was pregnant when finally they arrived it wasn't long when she experienced a miscarriage somebody came from kwanta street to announce the bad news that your wife has miscarried but well, i asked is she fine he said yeah everything fine yeah tell her that if she's not sick if everything is fine then we thank god i have also just uh been involved in an accident i'm fine so if he's fine and i'm fine this evening i'll be with the kichebi people to see them for the first time tomorrow we will walk 17 miles to alopacha we had no bicycle let alone motorbike so we're going to walk when we come back on the fourth day we will visit odumasi assembly after that i'll come to nkwanta and see her the elder looked at me in unbelief and in my presence he said osofu wopetam san alegbogbe osofu you are so hard hearted how could your wife go through all this and you not going to see her by saying i'm going to preach here then i walk to this place and on the fourth day i come back so what shall i do if she was sick or had a going to see her. liberia in 1988 we left crashing quanta for liberia before going at the farewell service there was a prophetic message delivered by a young lady whom we didn't know that says the lord my servant i am sending you to where you are going i am with you 
I'll be with you. We are going to face difficult situations, very, very dire situations. But I will deliver you, I will protect you, I will increase your number as a family and bring you back. And thereafter, I will honor you in ways that we cannot understand now. So, we look forward to greater things. At the point I asked my wife, what are the difficult things that the Lord said we're going to be? Letting the window that the worst was yet to come. In December 89, we went for a national convention to a city called Marshall City. Apostle D.K. Anai was the national head. On the last day of the convention, there was a prophetic message delivered. That says the Lord, I'm going to shake Liberia like a man shakes a tree. Many leaves are going to drop. But after the shaking, I will make a way for the church in Liberia. That prophecy happened to be delivered through me. When we closed from that convention, on the 31st of December, ELBC, that is the national radio station, announced that rebel forces had entered into the nation from the northeastern part of the country. Despite the grace God has given you, bless you with wisdom and greatness and power and honor, you still remain humble. Humble to the point that sometimes baffled our minds. Despite your present situation, you remain committed to duty. You are ever ready and willing to do anything for God and for the people of God. It was Liberia that some of the special qualities of Apostle Dutini came out. Especially when that war broke out. The church wanted him to come. But when the war broke out, he said no. It was difficult for him to leave the people in Liberia and come back to Ghana. What would he do if he would go back as a pastor after running away? So he decided to save the people. I mean, that was very sacrificial and at the cost of possibly losing his life. But that is how he is. For somebody to decide to say that because of the love for God, the love for the church members. He's jeopardizing his life, the life of his family, uh, in far away, uh, in Liberia. Uh, it's something else. You should be a certain kind of a man of God. To not to run away for your life, but to sacrifice so much for people, foreigners, uh, excuse my language, that you do not know. Great man of God. Tout de voir. God granted us grace. We took over 127 assemblies with 19 pastors. Through the power of miracles, wonders, through the power of vision setting, and above all, goal setting, strategic planning, led by the Holy Spirit, who strengthened us and brought us together. In five years, we had planted a total of 278 new assemblies. So if you put this together, you would see what the Lord had found. France. France. Actually, 
We spent time to teach and teach and teach. I reminded the Lord of our prayer, grant us at least one spectacular miracle, not just the preaching of the word. And there I saw a cripple, a black lady being healed by a white man, her husband. Sit at the front seat. Let her take the front seat. I was excited. My people didn't know why I was so excited and how I was so certain that the Lord would heal her. At a point, I walked to her and said, Madam, j'ai vu que vous avez cru le message que je suis en train de prêcher. Et si vous allez accepter ça, vous pouvez vous lever à l'instant même et commencer à marcher. Madame, I've seen that you believe the message. If you accept it, you will rise up and walk. I grabbed her by the hand, said, Madame, in the name of Jesus, get up. I held her, stood there on her feet. She was trembling. Madame, in the name of Jesus, take a step. Je peux pas. I cannot. So, I held her by one hand. She took the first step, the second, the third. I left her. Hey, hey, bah. The auditorium exploded. The woman now began to walk here and there and. Her husband wept like a baby. And Switzerland. You know, sir, or you'll be a or a young papa. Now, a shed senior, a senior, and nanti a crack, and son or quiet chairman. Now, or yet chairman, so so, you need share a senior or tear, copum so di a real chairmanship at your mana. And who said, Papa, now, sir, saw I will go for. Uncle <laughs> Ya ko restauranta ya kudidi na ya ya junior ministers no se ba ne se ni mpeni phoneu kushia sa baby ya doa kutana no na se se usu kope baby fufro kutana na wa kudidi oh ba pe fray ya wasi yamra na yentrante bumo na yemetrante bumo eni wanyi na didi ya chese komodi ni bibia no na ohun se oni en relate kama pa bi su ya bibi fri e fri le pionnier de l'église au mali c'est à dire c'est à travers lui que l'évangile est arrivé pour planter ou implanter n'est-ce pas l'église de pentecôte du mali dans laquelle nous sommes aujourd'hui il y a un jeune homme malien nommé 
Broya Makelita, étudiant à l'époque, qui avait ses parents en République de la Côte d'Ivoire. Il a rendu ses parents visite pendant les grandes vacances. Alors, quand il est allé, quand même, on lui a indiqué une assemblée proche qui était dirigée par le pasteur d'Anor Kornata dans la ville de Bouaké. Il est allé pour le visiter. Au cours de la visite, le Saint-Esprit s'est manifesté d'une manière puissante. Alors, c'est là qu'il a demandé à la, au pasteur du district, qui est le pasteur Kornata, aujourd'hui l'apôtre, bien sûr, qu'il voudrait avoir cette église implantée dans son pays. L'apôtre was called into the office of an apostle at age 33. Seven years on at 40, when he was only 14 years into ministry, he got elected into the highest office of the church, chairman, making him the third African, in fact, Ghanaian chairman after the founder, Pastor James McKeon, and the third African after Apostle Fred Stephen Sappho, taking over the mantleship of leadership from Prophet Matheson Kojo Yabua as the fourth and youngest chairman so far. The old grouping uh, with the pioneers of the church were now leaving the sea. And suddenly a prophe prophecy came that into me must be the chairman. In fact, some of us who are far ahead of him and others, we queried, hi, is God right? What, what is happening? But it was a prophecy. 40 years becoming the leader of a big church like the Church of Pentecost, you should be God sent. Otherwise, you can't lead this church at that age. I see that God actually used him. God gave him so much wisdom, and he is a man of God. He led his fathers. Uh, some of us are leading the church, but the team that we are working with, I, I cannot say that they are my fathers, so to speak. I can say that in some way they are my contemporaries. But he led his fathers, and by extension, the church, and he was able to do that. I mean, he was not terrified by them because I know that if in his team he had people like Apostle Anson, he went to him as a probationary overseer. He worked with Apostle, late Apostle D.K. Anna as an overseer. I mean, he worked with his fathers, yet he was able to lead them and lead the church. He wasn't terrified by them. He was able to say no when he has to say. And the wisdom that God gave him, even to manage them and to manage the church at that age uh, baffles my mind. When he was elected a chairman, uh, I worked under him as an apostle at that time, the principal of the Bible College, later rector, working under him as the chairman. Uh, then when I also became the chairman, he also worked under me as the chairman. So I've known him from all these perspectives. And that gives me a very good picture of who Apostle Intumi is. His marriage has produced six mature adults, five men, and the only lady, Joanna. Today, his eldest son, Dr. Emmanuel Ejikum Intumi, is now a full-time minister in the Church of Pentecost. Thank you so much because they have been to be leaders. Uh, as a pastor, apostle, you are a leader. Uh, so we saw how they handle the situations, we saw how they lead their lives. So that um, like every time you are preparing for something, you are planning for something, thinking of what is coming. 
and all that. Uh, so that's that is something I've learned. That whatever you are doing, give it your all. Give it your best, very best. Put all your effort into it to make sure that you do it and then you do it very well. Apostle into me was a great family man. I believe he has done a great job. The journey wasn't easy. It was a difficult journey. Uh, I would tell it as a marathon race. He's managed to spread the gospel all over the world. In all corners of the world, he traveled to preach God's works. Now that he's coming home for retirement, uh, I believe the Almighty God is with him and uh, his blessings will count on him as usual. I won't be surprised that God's miracle is going to work very soon. Taking over a church population of 803,299, membership rose to 1,695,400 on July 1, 2022. Number of assemblies rose from 7,109 to 13,418, whilst that of ordained ministers rose from 508 to 1,296, with a lead leadership population of 38,838 to 75,100. His tenure of chairmanship from 1998 to 2008 saw the church grow astronomically at all spheres. I'm saying that he's a team player, but he's also somebody who puts his feet down when it comes to certain decisions. Having worked with him for almost 15 or so years, I have learned hard working. A person to me never said, yeah, <laughs> or something like that. Very, 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 very hard working. Very, very, very committed to the cause of Christ and uh, uh, his church. I have learned from him how one should think about the future of the church, not about your personal maybe gains or whatever, and then uh, take decisions that will impact, you know, the uh, future of the church. Uh, for his humility, yes, I've learned a lot uh, from him that uh, even if you are uh, at a higher position, you still need to come down and, you know, uh, join hands with so-called subordinates or compatriots and then uh, move the work home. Under his leadership, 
In November 2003, the church celebrated its golden jubilee with pomp and pageantry. Another landmark achievement of the Intumi era is the Pentecost University PU, which began as Pentecost University College PUC. He came into the ministry and then to the office as chairman with his body, soul and spirit. He's one person who was very committed to his calling, diligent, prudent, humble, selfless and outgoing. To say the least, he's an affable person, somebody who attracts people. Whether I like it or not, you meet the man, his smile and the way he will carry himself will uh, cause you to get closer to him. I can say he's the man of the word and he's able to catch the attention of his audience with the examples and how he will narrate the biblical stories and bring the application or let you love the man. When we talk about evangelism and prayer life, he's somebody who was also always out there to lead us to win souls. And he could pray when he goes to his knees or his leading and prayer meeting. You observe that this is the man who is out there for us. He's a man of prayer, a man of the word, committed to his calling, very prudent, down to earth, lover of everybody, both in the Christian community and outside. During his 10 years as a leader of the church, we, we all observe the way the Lord used him to lift the church to another level. He was a visionary leader. He rolls out a vision and he follows it through. And he's very bold. When he said that we are going this way, you better admit and follow him before you realize he's already there. During this time, he was able to enhance the image of the church beyond Ghana. And even in Ghana, the political divides, he was able to carry himself, said that both, especially the MPP and NDC, loved him. So he was a peacemaker at that. And then when he became the chairman or president of GPCC during his time to was able to open it up for a lot of charismatics to also join. So he he's a classical Pentecostal, but he has a heart for all other. Uh, the, there are few people who, are, who understand ecumenism that's accepting all other religions, and he's the type who is able to embrace people and then help them grow. He is a mentor. I was to me as a mentor, and if you work with him, he is always prepared to empty himself to help you do what God has asked you to do.